segue. All right. And, and of course, by the way, passive aggressively, I had it on mute for half the right. <laughs> Always in a panic. Always have it on mute because what if people hear us talking while that's up? Saying Seth, this, I don't know if people want to hear us talk. Well, maybe they do actually before the show. Basically, this these are our fake personalities. <laughs> Before the show is where all the hostility comes out, and he's terrified of people really picking up on that. Well, I think you should be terrified. Oh no, I don't think people are going to know that justified. <laughs> I am justified. Anyway, you guys. So we have two things today. We have a whole urine town reunion. Okay, first, I'm what James is this? Wesley. I'm this is my husband Seth Burdett. Yet again, it reminds me of when I'm in the south and I go hi, and someone goes and I go, I go into a store, and go like, hi, do you know where the blah 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 is? And how are you? Uh, anyway, when they cut me off because I haven't been polite. Yes, I am Seth, and this is James. Well, we're just we assuming that people. This says know. James and Seth. They know who we are. Do you know who we are? I'm Seth Tedeschi. That's James Wesley. This is Stars in the House. What up? And we are here for the Actors Fund. And, and today's a really special day. That's why I'm all excited. We've never ahead. done this before. No, basically, we've never done this. We were asked to announce the Drama Desk nominations, which is crazy. That's why I'm so hyper. We've A, never. That's why you're so hyper? Also, <laughs> adult ADD. Okay. But the point is, it's such a big deal. We've never, it's just I've never announced awards before. Uh, but we have a whole year and time reunion coming up as well, which is thrilling because. That was a hit show. Yes, um, yes sir. What is starts in the house? Um, well, why don't we just go right in to talking about some money, Seth, because we've gotten amazing donations in, and I want to read just a few and say what our new total is, because we get our new total every day from the Actors Fund. But So we want to give a few shout-outs, because I keep saying it, but one, the Actors Fund is for anyone in the performing arts, any yeah. professional in the performing arts, behind the scenes, on stage, music, dance, stage managers, casting directors, anyone in the country, if they need help with rent and health insurance premiums, food, utilities, et cetera, their medical here. bills. And, and we're constantly amazed by the donations. I would say the average donation is like probably at this point, like $25, which is incredible. It's like, so we want to give shout outs to those people who donate the five and $10 because they add up. So in fact, I have so many donations here, Seth, I'm going to read purposely the ones that are $10 and under uh. to show that they count. We want to thank Brianna from Colorado, $10. Madeline from Florida, $10. Gabby from Florida, $5. Beth from Ohio, $10. Brianna from Pennsylvania, $10. Jamie from New York, $10. Michael from Tennessee, $10. Allison from Michigan, $5. Christine from Florida, five, a lot of people from Florida, $5. Claire from Minnesota, $10. Mary from New Jersey. Oh, that's $25. But we'll take that. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> I was just trying to stay on my $5 and $10 theme. Christine from Florida, $5. James from Arizona, $5. It's really incredible how many people donate that. And we know that these are hard times, and we want to say thank you. And so it, it has led to, after five weeks, a grand total of $232,240 for the Actors Fund. And on just the flip side, a shout out. We got an email from Stephen and Dennis and Owen no. in California who always try to make themed donations. <laughs> so when we had uh, we when we had Lay Miz on, they made a donation of two four six two hundred forty six dollars. Oh one two hundred forty six dollars and one <laughs> cent they made in honor of the Lay Miz. So for the urine town today, who knows what they're gonna do? That's um, right. What else do we have to say? Anything? So I think that's it because you can donate at starsinthehouse.com, By the way, obviously. There. Whenever you want, go to charleshouse.com and donate. It all goes to the Actors Fund. And here are the drama desk nominations. Here we go. So I just want to say the beginning. Yes. There's usually like, I mean, when I've seen this, there's like a team there helping because the point is the I publicists from all yeah, the shows. Right? I know we're going to mispronounce names of people and names of shows. I just want to apologize in advance. Like, if I had a team, I'd be like, oh my God, how is this? So it's a combination of nerves and combination of I just don't know how to pronounce the right name. So please don't be upset if you pronounce names wrong. We just, our team is literally our four dogs and they do not speak <laughs> English well and the cat. <laughs> So no one's actually here to help. So sorry about that. So let me, let me take a drink because there are a lot of nominations. Mm -hmm. Seth, oh these one, are like donations on the back. We're well, recycling we're paper. We're recycling paper. <laughs> these are these are tough times. We're recycling paper here. Am I um, reading this part? You're reading where it says Seth, oh. and I'm gonna do that, and then you're gonna do that. So okay. you go. Uh, we're excited to announce the nominations for the 65th <clears throat> annual Drama Desk Awards, which celebrates outstanding theater in New York at a time when the New York theater community needs it most. As Drama Desk co-presidents Charles Wright and David Barber recently said, New York theater is caught in a moment of exceptional uncertainty. In the face of this, the mission of the Drama Desk, recognizing the thousands of artists and craftspeople who make up our community has never been more urgent. This year's Drama Desk <laughs> Awards attest to the New York theater community's vigor and unity. 
and are dedicated to the memory of former Drama Desk President William Wolf. With that in mind, and without further ado, here are the nominations. The nominees for Outstanding Featured Actor in a Play are Victor Almanzar, Halfway Bitches Go Straight to Heaven, Esteban Andres Cruz, Halfway Bitches Go Straight to Heaven, David Allen Greer, <clears throat> excuse me, Soldier's Play, Paul Hilton, The Inheritance, Chris Perfetti, Moscow, 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 Moscow. The nominees for Outstanding Featured Actress in a Play are Patrice Johnson Chavanes, Run Boy Run and In Old Age, Christina Poe, Happy Bitches Go Straight to Heaven, Belange Rodriguez, The Brief Wondrous Life of Oscar Wilde, Elizabeth Rodriguez, Happy Bitches Go Straight to Heaven, Lois Smith, The Inheritance. The nominees for Outstanding Featured Actor in a Musical are George Abood, Emoji Land, Christian Borrell, Little Shop of Horrors, Jay Armstrong Johnson, Scotland, PA, Conrad Ricamora, Soft Power, and Ryan Vasquez, The Wrong Man. The nominees for Outstanding Featured Actress in a Musical are that, um, Yesenia Ayala, West Side Story, Paula Leggett Chase, The Unsinkable Molly Brown, LaChance, The Secret Life of Bees, Elise Allen Lewis, Soft Power, Lauren Patton, Jagged Little Pill. The nominees for Outstanding Director of a Play are Jessica Blank, Cole Country, Stephen Daldry, The Inheritance, John Ortiz, Halfway Bitches Go Straight to Heaven, Tina Satter, Is This a Room, and Erica Schmidt, Macbeth. The nominees for Outstanding Director of a Musical are Stephen Brackett, A Strange Loop, Thomas Kale, The Wrong Man, Kathleen Marshall, The Unsinkable Molly Brown, Lee Silverman, Soft Power, Annie Tim, Octet. The nominees for Outstanding Choreography are Camille A. Brown for Colored Girls Who Have Considered Suicide When the Rainbow Is Enough. Anna Teresa Dekeers Macher, mm -hmm. sorry, West Side Story. Uh, Keon Madrid and Marie Madrid, Beyond Babel. Kathleen Marshall, The Unsinkable Molly Brown. Sonia Tia, Moulin Rouge, and Travis Wall, The Wrong Man. The nominees for Outstanding Music are Ross Golan, The Wrong Man. Michael R. Jackson, A Strange Loop, Dave Malloy, Octet, Joshua Rosenblum, Einstein's Dreams, Duncan Sheik, The Secret Life of Bees, Janine Tesori, Soft Power. The nominees for Outstanding Lyrics are Susan Birkenhead, The Secret Life of Bees, Adam Guan, Scotland, PA, Michael R. Jackson, A Strange Loop, Joanne Sidney Lesner, and Joshua Rosenblum, Einstein, Einstein's Dreams, mm -hmm. Dave Malloy, Octet, and Mark Saltzman, Romeo, and Bernadette. The nominees for Outstanding Book of a Musical are David Henry Wong, Soft Power, Michael R. Jackson, A Strange Loop, Dave Malloy, Octet, Lynn Nottage, The Secret Life of Bees, Mark Saltzman, Romeo, and Bernadette, Dick Scanlon, The Unsinkable Molly Brown. The nominees for Outstanding Orchestrations are Tom Kitt, Jagged Little Pill, Alex Lackamore, The Wrong Man, or Matisse and Dave Malloy, Octet, David Troub, John Danny Clancy. Troub. Oh, Danny Troub, sorry. Danny Troub, John Clancy, and Larry Hockman, Soft Power, and Jonathan Tunick, West Side Story. The nominees for Outstanding Music in a Play are Steve Earle, Cold Country, Frightened Rabbit, Square Go, Jim Harburn, Feral, Martha Redbone, for colored girls who've considered suicide when the rainbow is enough, Adam Seidel, Jane Bruce, and Daniel Ocanto, Original Sound. The nominees for Outstanding Scenic Design for a Play are Catherine Cornell, Macbeth, Clint Ramos, Grand Horizons, Adam Rigg, Fefu and Her Friends, Paul Steinberg, Judgment Day, B.T. Whitehill, The Confession of Lily Dare. The nominees for Outstanding Scenic Design for a Musical are Julian Crouch, Little Shop of Horrors, Anna Luizos, Scotland, PA, Derek McLean, Moulin Rouge, Clint Ramos, Soft Power, Amy Rubin, and Brittany Vasta, Octet. The nominees for Outstanding Costume Design for a Play are a Asa Ben Ali, Blues for an Alabama Sky, Monta Montana Levy Blanco, Fefu and Her Friends, Tony Leslie James for Colored Girls Who Have Considered Suicide When the Rainbow is Enough, Anthony McDonald, Judgment Day, Rachel Townsend and Jessica John, The Confession of Lily Dare, and Kay Voice, uh, Coriolanus. Coriolanus. Yes, thank you, sir. I know that because of Cole Porter. Kick her right in the Coriolanus. Anybody kiss me, Kate? The nominees for Outstanding Costume Design for Musical are Vanessa Look, Emoji Land, Jeff Mashi, Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice, Mark Thompson, <clears throat> Tina, the Tina Turner Musical, 
Anita Yavich, Soft Power. Catherine Zuber, Moulin Rouge. The nominees for Outstanding Lighting Design for a Play are Isabella Bird, Heroes of the Fourth Turning, Una Curley, Dr. Ride's American Beach House, Heather Gilbert, The Sound Inside, Mimi Jordan Sharon, Judgment Day, and E. Jow, Cl Greater Clements. The nominees for Outstanding Lighting Design for Musical are Betsy Adams, The Wrong Man, Jane Cox, The Secret Life of Bees, Herrick Goldman, Einstein's Dreams, <clears throat> Bruno Poet, Tina, The Tina Turner Musical, Justin Townsend, Moulin Rouge. The nominees for Outstanding Projection Design are David Bengali, Einstein's Dreams, Julia Frey, Medea, Luke Halls, West Side Story, Lisa Renkel, Impossible, and Mojiland, and Hannah, Seth, you're gonna have to help me. Hannah Wazaleski. There we go, Fires in the Mirror. The nominees for Outstanding sign, Sound <clears throat> Design for a Play are, are Paul Arditi and Christopher Reed, The Inheritance, Justin Ellington, Heroes of the Fourth Turning, Mikhail Fixo, Dana H., Palmer Hefferin, Fefu and Her Friends, Lee Kinney and Sine Yamada, Is This a Room? The nominees for Outstanding Sound Design for a Musical are Tom Gibbons, West Side Story, Kai Harada, Soft Power, Peter Helinski, Moulin Rouge, Hedenori, Hed, Hedenori, Hedenori, Nakajo, Octet, and Nevin Steinberg, The Wrong Man. The nominees for Outstanding Wig and Hair Design are Campbell Young Associates, Tina, the Tina Turner Musical, Cookie Jordan, Fefu and Her Friends, Nikia Mathis, Stu, Tom Watson, The Great Society, Bobby Zlotnick, <clears throat> Emoji Land. The nominees for Outstanding Solo Performance are David Kale, We're Only Alive for a Short Amount of Time, Kate Del Castillo, The Way She Spoke, Laura Lenny, My Name is Lucy Barton, Jacqueline Novick, Get on Your Knees, and Deirdre O'Connell, Dana H. The nominees for Unique Theatrical Experience are Beyond Babel, <clears throat> Feral, is this a room? Midsummer, a banquet. The nominees for outstanding fight choreography are Vicki Manderson, Square Go, Thomas Shaw, a, a soldier's play, Uncle Davis, Uncle, Uncle Dave's Fight House, Halfway Bitches Go Straight to Heaven. The nominees for outstanding adaption are Adaptation. You're right. The nominees for outstanding adaptation are A Christmas Carol by Jack Thorne, Judgment Day by Christopher Shin, <clears throat> Mojada. Yeah, Mojada by Luis Alfaro, Moscow, Moscow, wow, Ma let me try it. There's six. Moscow, Ma Moscow, 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 by Holly Pfeiffer. The nominees for Outstanding Puppet Design are Raphael Mischler, Tumaco, Rockefeller Productions, Paddington Gets in a Jam, and Amanda Villalobos, Is This a Room? The nominees for Outstanding Actor in a Play are Charles Bush, The Confession of Lily Dare, Edmund Donovan, Greater Clements, Raul Esparza, Seared, Francis Jew, Cambodian Rock Band, Trini Sandoval, 72 Miles to Go, Kyle Soler, The Inheritance. The nominees for Outstanding Actress in a Play are Rose Byrne, Medea, Liza Colon, Zayas. Zayas, Halfway Bitches Go Straight to Heaven, Emily Davis, Is This a Room, April Mathis, Tony Stone, and Ruth Nega Hamilton. I mean, Hamilton, Hamlet. <laughs> the nominees for Outstanding Actor in a Musical are David Aaron Damane, The Unsinkable Molly Brown, Chris Dwan, Enter Laughing, Joshua Henry, The Wrong Man, Francis Jew, Soft Power, Larry Owens, A Strange Loop. The nominees for Outstanding Actress in a Musical are Tammy Blanchard, Little Shop of Horrors, Beth Malone, The Unsinkable Molly Brown, Seth, take this. Sekhan Sengla, The Secret Life of Bees. Elizabeth Stanley, Jagged Little Pill, and Adrian Warren, Tina, The Tina Turner Musical. The nominees for Outstanding Revival of a Play are Fefu and Her Friends, For Colored Girls Who Considered Suicide When the Rainbow Was Enough, Macbeth, Much Ado About Nothing, A Soldier's Play. The nominees for Outstanding Revival of a Musical are Little Shop of Horrors, The Unsinkable Molly Brown, West Side Story. The nominees for Outstanding Play are Cambodian Rock Band, Greater Clements, Halfway Bitches Go Straight to Heaven, Heroes of the Fourth Turning, The Inheritance. And the nominees for Outstanding Musical are Octet, The Secret Life of Bees, Soft Power, A Strange Loop, The Wrong Man. This year's Ensemble Award 
goes to the eight Pitch Perfect performers in Dave Malloy's a cappella musical Octet. In this year's Sam Norkin Award goes to actress Mary Bacon, who continued her versatile career of compassionate, searing work. And this is odd for us to read, but it's very nice. This year's special award goes to the Actress Fund, Seth Rudetsky and James Wesley for connecting members of the theater community and lifting spirits during the coronavirus crisis. The Public Theater's Mobile Unit, which tours free Shakespeare throughout the five boroughs. And WP Theater and Julia Miles, the company's founder, who died this spring. And Claire Warden for her pioneering work as an intimacy choreographer. <clears throat> and that's it. Congratulations to all of the nominees and special award nominees. The 65th special annual honorees. honorees, sorry. Uh, the 65th annual Drama Desk Awards will be announced on Sunday, May 31st. For additional details over the coming weeks, weeks, visit dramadeskawards.com and follow at Drama Desk Awards on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. So just so you know, we were so nervous that we were gonna like be happy that our friends were nominated that I've never been more blank faced and shut down emotionally because I don't want to be like, oh my god. So like completely so if you and think no. that we're like bored we're not i'm just trying no. to hold and that's, my and I think that's why i was like stumbling i i did much better in rehearsal yeah. Seth. it's like because we know some of the people yeah i just felt all this and pressure. we're trying to be very i have no nothing in this game it's very up Ming. yeah so like i that, shut down sides. emotionally but um so but congratulations, really, congratulations. So, yeah. now we can be yeah, to everybody. Nice. Congratulations to, to everyone. And, um, and especially all of our pals that got nominated. It's, it's, it was great to get to read your names. That's um, right. And some of our pals names, we actually, I forgot how to pronounce them, even though I actually- I noticed that. Sorry. I didn't want to bust you during the thing. I know, right? It's more nerve wracking than you think. Um, so congratulations anyway. to Dramatist nominations. I'm glad that 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 there's some normalcy uh, in the theater That's world. what I was thinking too. And I think that's why I was a little bit nervous reading them. And it was actually emotional, Seth, because um, it it felt like you know the times that we've heard the <laughs> nominations before when things were normal, and I found myself strangely emotional reading them because it felt normal. Mm -hmm. So that's that's my you know we we try to be pretty straightforward and and honest here, and because that's what we appreciate when our guests are. And what's going on when we ask them, what are you doing to stay healthy? And a lot of people are actually very open in sharing their depression and anxiety and what's going on. And so to read that, to have a sense of normalcy um, was actually much more emotional than I expected it to be. So, so now go. let's lift it up. With our original cast that reunion. Was, that was that was uplifting. I'm just like. No, it was. You mean, you mean uplift from my, my being a downer? Yeah, Is that I got, I got to be honest. <laughs> you brought me the hell down. Um, but regardless. Okay. Hold on. So do we have, yeah. we, we we can have everyone on screen, right? I think so. I think we can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. I don't think we went okay, over. Good. I don't think we went That's over. always an added little stress when we One, have people two, backstage. You know, we can get them all. We out. always feel bad that we have to like put people backstage and not on. So I love it. Okay. That's fine. Great. So we have, um, we have the original. Officer Lockstock, Jeff McCarthy. Hi, Jeffy. Hey, hey, hey. I like Happy your uh, day to you. your earbuds. <laughs> um, we have the it's older, we had to. It's the law, apparently. Exactly. Oh, that's that's yeah. We have the original ingenue, Jennifer Laura Thompson. Hi, Jen. <laughs> what are you scared of? Hi, Hi. Hi girl. I, I scared myself. <laughs> no, <laughs> <don't> <laughs> <say>. uh, <laughs> we have oh God. It's all quote unquote good. We have uh, Miss Penelope Pennywise. Hi, Nance. Hi, Nancy Opal. Hi, guys. I'm got these weird little ding things happening, and I don't know how to turn. Oh, you <laughs> that's always been the case, hasn't it, Nancy? Yeah. Put it on. Um, do not disturb. Huh? But no, I'm talking about my computer because I'm on my computer right now. Right. Can, you, can you do not disturb? Your computer too? Yeah, you can do not disturb your computer. It's in the top left, right. Right in the top right corner. I'm almost positive that's what Dave used to tell us. David would tell me. Yes. Look at the top that. right. Okay, well, Jeff will explain. Okay, Jeff Jeff knows everything. Um, well, up, right? on your Chrome or on your Safari, there's there are three bars way up in the right-hand corner. Okay. Drag that down. It says notifications. Yeah, notifications. And then somewhere in there, oh, notifications. It says do not disturb. Turn that on. I don't see that. Yeah. Ah, yes, I do. Thank you, Jeffy. Yay. Yes. 
She was always the leader of the cast. <laughs> and then we have little Sally herself all the way. I think she's on the West Coast right now, the lovely Spencer Caden. Hey, Spence. Hi. Hi. And then we have Bobby Strong, who's still got that thick, thick hair. Please welcome the wonderful <laughs> Hunter Foster. There he is. Hi, guys. Hunter. Hey. Move you guys closer. There we go. Hi, all you're in town people. How are you all? Hi. Hi. Jennifer's Hi. microphone is off, though, I think. Oh, sorry. Pass it. Oh. Hold on. I think she has. Oh. Hey, listen, I forgot to tell there you. Go. Basically, on this um, platform, you can't speak at the same time as someone else, or else and both voices get cut out. So basically, there has to be a lot of enthusiastic nodding, and then you can speak. But just so you know, you have to be like, before you speak. So right. Jimmy, okay. Hunter oh. looks about 21 years old. What, what, what yeah, right? Mean? Yeah. Uh, it's urine. It's actual pee. Oh, I see. He's anti-aging. Anti-aging. So, so what are you guys doing to stay healthy during this? It's now been, we've been in self-quarantine here for... Five, five weeks plus weeks. Yeah, what, do you, weeks. what do you guys, how are you guys handling? What are you doing? What can you share? Uh, Jeff? I am in Montana. I came up here to play Cyrano de Bergerac. It got shut down in the second tech dress, but oh. I've stayed up here to avoid Death Central down there with you all. I, I hear you. So are you in a here hotel? I am probably for another week or two weeks or something. Are you in a hotel? Are you like in a bed and breakfast? No, no, no. I'm staying with a dear friend. Oh, okay. huh. Yeah. Very we've nice. been riding bikes in the mountains. It's been great. Oh. I mean, actually, a fantastic. Ever, I'd spent very little time in Montana prior to this. Mm. Well, let's counteract the Montana. And Jennifer, yeah. you're you're on the Upper West Side. How are you handling it? What are you doing for yourself? Um, I it's, <clears throat> it's strange because I've been trying to um, remain calm, and then every now and then I just have a total meltdown because um, the 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 loss of control is so palpable, and um. But the Upper West Side is vigilant. So we see every, almost everyone has masks. Everybody's mm -hmm. social distancing. I found my grocery store that's usually pretty empty. Um, and then I panic, disinfect when I get home. Yeah. <laughs> I wiped everything down. Right. And, um, and I've been cooking like crazy. I'm like a really healthy, good cook. <laughs> healthy cooking or like you finally get to make those cheese and butter oh. dishes? <laughs> good, really good cooking. Like cilantro, chicken thighs, and um, like Indian food, chicken tikka masala. I don't know. <laughs> I can do anything. <laughs> Go for it, girl. Nancy Oprah, you're a, you're a Midtown lady. How's it there? Zombie apocalypse. Is it? <laughs> yes, you guys. It's, it's scary. My you know, there are days I look out and I go, oh, it's such a pretty sunny day. And I go, I'm not going out there with those folks because what you'll see is you'll see an occasional person, you know, walking their dog, which of course I do too, but I don't really have a great sense of wanting to go outside because there's not really much left in Midtown. Um, you want to even, you know, have eye contact with is what's happening. Right. Right now. It's just scary. It's just <laughs> You know, we're we're about an hour outside the city, so it's like for our grocery store experience, we like call the local business, and we like I just came back home, and I ask them what I'm, you know, what I want, and they're great, and Tammy's wonderful, and then I'll come and she'll put it in our trunk, and we go. But like, how, so we don't really navigate the grocery stores that much. But how is it in Midtown? I don't go out. So you get things delivered. Yeah, and that's not easy either. Yeah, it's been it's, it's been pretty challenging actually. Right. Uh, because, you know, I used to I used to always just get from Fresh Direct and those kind of places all sold out. Peapod all sold out. Everybody's sold out. So you just have to get lucky. And like if you wake up at three o'clock in the morning or something, go, let me see if I can get a delivery. It's, wow. it's been kind of like that. So I think um, Jennifer is willing to cook for you and deliver. <laughs> so <laughs> Thank you, Jen. I think the chicken tikka, the, the tikka masala sounds really good. I was, sounds really good. <laughs> She's just saying. Spencer Caden, the first question is someone just wrote, what is behind Spencer Caden? It looks like an x-ray. That is true. What is that? Oh, it's a piece of blown up photography. Oh. 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 It's mommy Wait, I'm and bad funny. At, I'm, I'm bad at angles. <laughs> it's her son Haskell with her. It's my Unless funny if we boy. Better hair. Wait, maybe. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. It's a little bit better yeah. that way. Okay. okay, but we yeah, want to see you up close. Okay. So Spencer, oh, how old is he now? 
Oh, uh, almost 15. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Cause 2005. So Spence, what are you, you're in California, right? I'm in Los Angeles. Angeles. So what are you doing to sort of keep healthy physically, emotionally, whatnotness? Um, I stare lovingly into the eyes of my dogs a lot. I Seriously, without the dogs, this would be a whole different thing. Um, not only I'd take them for walks, but just like, there's a lot of just like. Mm. Is Mark setting. home with you, Spencer? Yeah, Mark is here. Oh. He's oh, uh, driving a blood van for the Red Cross every day. Wow. wow. Delivering, delivering blood to wow. Southland hospitals. Um, but yeah, we're all here together. So that's lucky. And uh, Hunty, are you, where are you? Upstate? Where are you right now? Midtown? No, I'm in uh, Syracuse. Yeah. Talk about your, because you're running your theater still, right? Yeah, we um, we were in the middle of uh, doing fences. And uh, when the whole thing sort of uh, happened and we had to make a decision to like, uh, to cancel the show. And then, then we had to, you know, lay off people, you know, had to tell people, we had to lay people off, which was a whole other thing. Uh, we're still sort of operating. We're trying to put online content Um so uh, I taught a class the other day uh, online, a monologue class, which is which was challenging. And then we're going to teach a teen class this week. So we're still trying to en engage as much as we can. Uh, and then uh, and Jen is here, and she's she's uh, doing a lot of equity stuff because she's the vice president. So right. it's kind of like we're we're just on Zoom constantly, like yeah. all 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 day. So yeah, but it's I, I will say it's it's much I um it's not so bad up here. We only have about right. 400, 400 total cases in the city. So um, but everyone here, though, is is everyone's wearing masks. Everyone's wearing That's gloves, e even though it's not. I, I was worried that because the cases were so low, that people were going to like, you know, revolt like they're doing other right. places. But people have been very good here, so uh, it's it's um, yeah, it's been it's been okay. So Hunter, no, for I, your, I, I ran into Hunter just right. recently. He says he's doing a revival of Urine Town, so that could be work for all of us. Yes. Yeah. We have just secured the rights and the press release is going out today. We're gonna uh, open our 2122 uh, season with You're in Town, which will be on the 20th anniversary oh, of the show. 20 what? We're gonna do it, we're, next, 2122. What's the name of your theater, Red Barn? Uh, Red House. Red House, is it one word? Yeah. And is it .com? Theredhouse.org. Hold on, I wanna He's just put it up. up. Well, that was gonna. That was actually my question, Hunter. I mean, it's like, when when are you planning, or are you able to plan your your season? Like, how how are you doing that? Uh, well, we we had fences was our show that we were supposed to do uh, next, and then Fun Home was supposed to be our show for the end of the season, and then we had to cancel both those shows, and then so now we're 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 toying about where they're going to go into next season, but the next season has to be moved around because we had already planned that, and people were buying tickets for that, so. Uh, you know, which we're still trying to figure it out. And again, we don't know, we have no idea, like even cause we're not supposed to have a show till September, but who knows how, what, yeah. how things are going to be in September. So right. we're trying to figure out, you know, can we do a uh, safe distance seating? Like we're trying to do different configurations where people can sit apart. Right. You know, do you take, take temperatures on the way in? Do you people wear uh, well, another thing? I was talking to a friend of mine who's a, a producer and they're, they're already starting to think about merchandising masks. That have like the the wicked logo or you know That's smart. I mean, do you do you, do you end up do you like have Zoom conferences with other artistic directors and you all kind of you know try to figure it out together or how does that yeah, work? Yeah, we've had several um, sort of uh, big and and we've gotten more and more people and I, I really feel bad for the summer theaters. They're the ones that are really oh getting because they've all canceled. I mean, uh, have to and it's and so they're just. Everyone's scrambling and they're really scared. And it's, uh, I feel I feel bad for the theaters because you know, these people have a misconception that theaters are, have a lot of money and they don't. And they're just sort of skating on the edge all the time. And for, for a summer theater to lose, um, you know, all this revenue for uh, a season is just devastating. So we've, we may lose some. Yeah, We've been telling yeah. people, um, we've been asking people not to get refunds. If they've already bought if tickets for a show that's it. been canceled, like Fun Homes, who just try not to get the refund. That way, the theaters can actually use the money. Have, have people um, said, keep my money instead? Have any of your patrons said that? Well, we've, we've only postponed them because we, we were hoping to maybe do them. So everyone has been, I think we've had like a couple of people have asked for their money back. For the most part, people have been pretty generous and they're like, we'll wait, you know, we'll donate. So pe people have been really good about the whole thing, which is, yeah. which is nice. Ah. Yeah. Okay, well, we got to focus on your fabulous show. So 
Let's go back. Let me see what clips I have. Of course, I didn't quite. I think this is. I think that's what I want. So this is just a general sense of Officer Lockstock and Little Sally, and sort of the style of the show, which is um, it's a show, but there's also kind of a deconstruction of the show happening as the show is happening. I think this is the right clip I want. Let me see this. A shortage so awful that private toilets eventually became unthinkable. A premise so absurd. Whoa, 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 whoa! There, Little Sally, not all at once. We'll hear more about the water shortage, but in the next scene. Oh, I guess you don't want to overload them with too much exposition, huh? Everything in its time, little Sally. You're too young to understand it now, but nothing can kill a show like too much exposition. How about bad subject matter? Or a bad title, even? That could kill a show pretty good. Exactly. <laughs> so I would love to first talk to Hunter about this, because I know some of this. So Hunter, when you... When you were cast in Year in Town, can you discuss what would happen when you would tell people the show you were in? Well, um, sometimes I would say, well, I'm in this show and it's about pee. And they would say what it was called. I was like, what's called Year in Town? <laughs> 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 I wouldn't say that. I was, I was just, I had no idea what I got myself into. And my agent tried to talk me out of it. And then I even came home to, to, to uh, Jen, my wife. And, and I said, so I got cast in a show called Year in Town. And she sort of stared blankly at me and she's like, what and I was, and she goes, she goes, Hunter, you can't do that. You can't do that. <laughs> that too. She was in the original cast on Broadway. Yeah, exactly. Spencer, so Spencer Caden, were you in it from the like Fringe Festival yeah. version? It was yeah. written for Spencer. This role. How how did that happen? I know Greg Codis and Mark Holman from Chicago, and they're watching. Oh, hi guys. Oh, hi. Uh -huh. um, so but, they knew uh, your style. Say what? They knew your style. You're like, you know, they yeah. Wrote I mean, I was in a theater company with Greg Codis and his wife Anne Halle for years, and so I've been performing Greg's material. Um, so it was sort of just it. It all made sense to me immediately. But you and know, I was like, oh wow, they just wrote a musical. How'd they do that? I don't know. Let's do it. Okay. Because you were a musical theater girl. No, I can't sing. <laughs> you're 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 a comedy chick. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't know what I am. I'm just, okay. I'm just a girl. I can't. Jennifer Laura Thompson, how did you get involved? Were you, were you, you were in the courthouse version, right? We all were. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, everybody we, um, was. Okay, yeah. I did maybe the second uh, sit down reading, you know, to present to like producers. And um, I was in love with the piece, to be honest, from the beginning. As, as weird as the title was, I, I thought it was so fucking smart. Um, and I think that you have to be smart to appreciate the humor. Um, and uh, so I got to do the reading and my agent also did not encourage me at first until, until we were very successful. Uh, <laughs> he didn't, drag me. didn't drag me. He, uh, he, uh, uh, I don't know. I forgot the question. I'm so flustered. <laughs> no, just to ask when you first got involved. So you got involved in a reading. So it was after the Fringe Festival, but then before the courthouse version. So yeah, people yes. are watching yes. don't know, yes. Your Town, when I first saw it, was presented in a theater that was half theater, half active courthouse, literally courthouse. Now, Jeff, yeah. would you ever Please see like, would you see people going to, to court ever at the theater, like in the stairway? You had to pass through a police station to get to the theater, which was upstairs. And I have to tell you, and I've told the story before, John Cullum and I, when we were re rehearsing uh, at the Dodger space, we were off in an ante room. <clears throat> they were doing Snuff That Girl out rehearsing that. And neither he or I were in that course. And we were both hating it. John Cullum and I agreed, like, what the fuck are we doing in this thing? And why did you do it, John? Well, my manager said, why did you do it, Jeff? My <laughs> agent said, blah, blah, blah. We literally, at that moment, left that room came in where they were finishing Snuff That Girl. And it was at that moment, the window opened and the show began to make sense to us. And it was a upward trajectory trajectory from that moment. Wow. Phenomenal. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Good timing. Well, we, on the first day of rehearsal, we all had a one week out. You guys remember that? <laughs> and they oh, said, now regarding your two week out, we went, no, wait a minute. It's a one week out. <laughs> Cause I think a lot of people wanted the hell out of there, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, but we fell in love with it. And this was the greatest ensemble I've ever been part of. I mean, I love this cast a lot. You know, but you were all big Bobby Pets. 
Like Nancy, so Nancy, you you would come from Broadway. How did how did they sucker you into the show? <laughs> <laughs> they just asked. I was John Rando. I mean, John Rando said, "Hey, I'm working on this thing. It's called You're in Town. Don't make any decisions on that. I'm going to send you the script." And I said, "Great. You know, I'll read it." You know when I you know when he told me that it was the Millennium. Uh, it was a Millennium, like in 1999 into 2000 cocktail party he said hey we're gonna do this thing please would you do just tell me what you think when you get it well this was back in the days when you still had something had to have something delivered uh. you know so I got the script and I got and I got the French festival um, little CD and I put it down I started reading and I went oh, this is fantastic <laughs> it never it never occurred to me that it was anything but fantastic now I have a funny story about Jeff so we're so we're in rehearsal, same about about the same time he's talking about he's referring to, and he would like sidle up to me, sort of voce say, "Is this funny?" <laughs> <laughs> and I'd say, yeah, "It's really funny." And then he'd say, "Am I funny?" Really? <laughs> I, I don't said, remember. Yes, yes. You're funny too. <laughs> You're all funny. <laughs> it's surreal. And then Nancy, so you didn't you didn't play the role at the Fringe Festival, right? No, no. I I joined the same time that that Jen did. We did so, that. We did that funny that that funny reading. Oh. The, yeah, and and of course Spencer was there too. But we did that funny reading in in some in some sort of little black boxy kind of a place, right? Right. Mm -hmm. And Cullum was not part of it. It was the guy from Wings. What's his name? The actor. Oh, Stephen uh, Weber. Stephen Weber. No, the no. Uh, Howard. No. Shalhoub. It was. Beef. It was what? I'm sorry. Tony Shalhoub. No, no, no. It's like no, no, no. David Ogden Style. Oh, Stram. Hank. Stram. Stram. No, Stram. He was part of it. Yeah. Right. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and oh, and we had that song about Rio that was cut oh, and replaced uh, with the class. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. yeah. yeah. But Nancy, surely nobody sang yeah. "Privilege to Pee" in that key at the French Festival. Was that song like created for your freak ass voice? Oh yes, it was written in that yeah. key. Oh, wow. it was written in that wow. key. And and, and and no, but you you have to understand. I don't know. I don't know the performer's name, but she when she would get to the politicians. She just flip over into head voice. Uh huh. Right. So she go the politicians and never. And I was going like, oh gosh, I can't do it that way because I couldn't imagine having to flip back and forth and back and forth oh. and back and forth. So when I when I uh, when we were doing the reading, um, Eddie Strauss, may he rest in peace, was teaching me the song, and I said, hey Eddie, is it okay, is it okay if I just kind of like belt the whole thing? And he went. Ooh, let's give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> we did, and I learned it. I said, you know what? Let's have Mark. Okay, so let's have Mark and Greg come in, and they're going to listen to it. So they come in, and Eddie goes, okay. So Nancy's thinking she'd like to belt the whole thing, and they, <laughs> and they kind of went like this. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's how that happened, and it's not that I thought it was just like. So great! It was the only way I could think of to do it in a seamless, sort of character-driven way. You know, I mean, it just didn't occur to me that you could do it any other way. So that's that's the way it happened. I have a little memory of that. I think this is it. This the good Lord made us, so we piss each day until we piss away. Yeah. Oh, oh, Nancy. Oh, Nancy. <laughs> <laughs> as a fellow as a fellow Beltris, what did you think of when you first heard Nancy sing that? What what? What did you <laughs> as a fellow Beltris, what did you think well, of? I'm not a Belter like her. I'm not a Belter like her. I never have. <laughs> and um I'd be flipping it. <laughs> I'd be flipping it every night. <laughs> 
That's for the that's for the uh, the red hunters theater, as we say in the business. Okay, so hold on. So so you all wound up doing it in this courthouse, and like I was saying, like did any convicts just wander into the audience one day? Not in the audience, well, but the backstage. I mean, we would there was chairs, and they would be there in little vests. There was one. We shared, we shared one bathroom. You guys remember that? All of us, the oh, men and women. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, I have a story about this. So Kay Walby, who was who played my ma, and so we we were kind of like we were all men and women sharing, you know, the bathroom. And you, sometimes you have to do certain things in the bathroom. And I, I'll never forget. I was I came into the bathroom, and Kay came came running in and went into the stall, and she was obviously doing number two. And I said. Kay, are you pooping? She goes, you're damn right I'm pooping. Get over it. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> we had to get over it. <laughs> That's off Broadway. Yep. And then, so when you were running off Broadway, when did you guys find out? I'm sure you never expected it to go to Broadway. When did you find out it was going to go to Broadway? Spencer, like, who told you? Did Greg tell you in advance? Did you get the inside scoop? No, I no, I remember there was an announcement. We were all there because it had been sort of these rumbles of it, and we were waiting. In my memory, we were waiting to find out if we were going to be extended off Broadway, or if we were going to take a break and then move to Broadway. And I'd never been on Broadway, or even like I'd rarely been above 14th Street, so I didn't like all of this was like, huh? So I remember them announcing it, and everyone was cheering, and I was kind of like, I don't know what that means, but it sounds good. Like it was, it was all a mystery to me. And what was it like? Yeah, did being, it feel yeah. any different being on Broadway than off Broadway? The stage was smaller on Broadway than the uh, police station stage. Yeah, we had to get used to that, just literally, as far as differences. And also, me and Spencer. So the place was sort of a wreck, uh, the Henry Miller's Theater. And so Spencer and I used to. I think it was a top of Act Two or someplace it, it, in Act Two. We had to go underneath the stage all the way to the back of the house and come in. And the, remember the rat traps? So there was <laughs> literally like, yes. you would you'd walk yeah. down the hallway and there's like dead rats in traps and blood everywhere. Yeah. This was a, this is a Broadway show on our way to the stage. Yes. Yeah. 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 Wow. So do, you all, do you all remember when um, wow. stage left uh, spot operator whose name I can't remember. Um, yes, he was, barf. He was on the catwalk oh, yes. above the audience numbers and he got, he got sick and vomited on the audience. Yes, and the audience, like 10 people got covered in vomit. <laughs> and all they wanted in exchange for that was uh, uh, complimentary t-shirts. And, <laughs> and Spencer's dog came on stage. Who's yep. dog? Right, right, right. My dog. dog. We were doing, um, uh, it was during Jen and I's number, uh, uh, what's Follow the, the heart? heart? Follow your heart. So we're up, and all of a sudden I hear this rattling and the audience, the audience is laughing and then Jen's, Jen's eyes, got, she was like, and I was like, what is yes. going on? And I look down and Spencer's dog is holding guys. stage. Yeah, you know, it's all the poltergeist. And then Spencer's dog came on and then came and made a, an appearance and then left, went off to stage right. Yes, but I think the dog had gotten down all. I think it was on the fifth floor and gotten all the yeah, way down. Yeah, he, he squeezed out of my dressing room. I went up to check on him. He squeezed out. I chased him down like four flights of stairs and then lost him because he had gone down from the second floor into the audience and then trotted up the aisle onto the stage. <laughs> and uh, oh, you on stage? And so he's like, "Oh, there's mommy." No, I, I wasn't on stage. He was just You're wandering chasing, around. But he just needed to go on stage. Okay. Yeah, but he came up right at the end of our number, so we finished the number, and then we said we sort of had a weird, weird applause because the dog was making his way. But I think people thought it was a part of the show. He yeah. was very casual. Yeah, he just yeah. then trotted off onto the side, and I heard one of the stage managers like, "We got him! We got him!" I'm sure they thought the vomit was part of the show because it's like you're in town. They were just like, "Whatever." Yeah, right. Now speaking of follow your heart, that's actually one of the jokes I remember when I really was like. I really appreciated the humor of the show. I was like, this is really special humor because you don't ever really see ingenues actually being funny. And I, Jen, I thought your timing was so funny that with Hunter. I have the moment that I, I remember I saw it off Broadway. I was like, oh, this is really special humor. It was this moment. <laughs> Do you hear 
that I was so obsessed with that. you cutting him off. I was yeah. so hilarious. <laughs> Oh God! Was that in the script or was that improv in a rehearsal? Yeah, it was in the script. Wow. I think it's, you know, however you chose to do it, it's up in the air. But it was definitely in the script. Greg Greg Cotus told me early on when we were in rehearsal, he said I tried to write a bad musical really well. <laughs> <laughs> that was brilliant. And, uh, John Rando very early on directed us to treat it like it was a, a Law and Order episode. Right, right, right. Oh, that's right. Oh, yeah. Done, done. Play it like a Law and Order episode. Very yeah. seriously. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the best way to do that kind of comedy is to just play it completely real. And that's you guys were so committed to that, even though there was such a a heightened sense. Nancy, what was what was your warning to Bobby Strong um, <laughs> about it? Uh, your head? Get your head out. Oh, yeah. It, it was like uh, let's see. Uh, oh, get your head out of the clouds. Get your head out of the clouds, Bobby Strong. Get it out of the clouds. <laughs> <laughs> It was so aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> like, you got a sweet looking head, Bobby. <laughs> That's very coded. <laughs> Who are some of the like, fun, famous people that came to see you guys on Broadway? Everybody in town oh. came to see this thing. Oh, I, I was so. Joanne Worley came. To, I'd worked with Joanne Worley. You'll appreciate this. In Greece, we did we, in Greece. We did Greece, right? So, um, just, thank you. Sorry. Right. So then, so then we we and right. All sorts of famous people had come, and so I, at the top of Act Two, I was like going in the in the audience, and I think it was me and Kay Walby, and and we're in character, and we're so we're like looking around, we're going. All of a sudden, this arm grabs me, pulls me down, and I'm in her lap, and it's Joanne Worley. And she grabs me by the face and says. I just want to let you know you're doing a great job. <laughs> oh my God. During Mike the scene, Nichols, like it, was Carol Burnett, it was unbelievable. <laughs> Everybody in the world came to this thing. Yeah. And, and then who what was it? Uh, what, uh, from Friends, the tall, skinny guy with the dark hair. He and David his girlfriend. Swimmer. Yeah, he made out during a good part of the show out in the audience with whoever he came with. I'll never Wait, forget. Because that. the show is so sexy? Apparently. <laughs> Yeah, it's hot. Wow. Yeah. I did not expect that yeah, story. No. <laughs> I hope he's not listening. <laughs> you never know. And then what was it like um, doing the Tony Awards? Hunter, I guess it was your second Tony Awards because you were done Greece already on the Tony Awards. Oh, you didn't do Footloose, though, did you? Was Footloose on the Tony Awards? No, no, we didn't get nominated. And then, so right. No, I don't think so, dear. All so right. it was your second. Spencer's your first. <laughs> Nancy, have you done the Tony Awards ever? Evita, Sunday in the Park with George, which we only had a filmed thing for that. Oh, Evita, because you were in New Argentina, I forgot. Of there course. Was. Yeah, I totally stepped on Mary Tyler Moore backstage on my way out. Yeah, she came. That's right. She came to the show too. Mm -hmm. And Jennifer, was it your first Tony Awards? Mm hmm. And I was gagged on stage the whole That's time. That's what I think. Well, let me yeah. see. <laughs> clip. Hold on. Before I... So I love, this, I love this moment because it's such a clever idea for you to be gagged, but also weirdly doing the choreography. Who thought of that? <laughs> hilarious. Was that John Randa? Who was that? I don't know. I think it was I mean, you. Was it me? I think it probably I think it might have been. <laughs> yeah. Take it's credit for it. Yeah. You're so yep. clever that you're, that you're committing to all tied up. And Spencer, you're so Jane Fonda. Like, you know when they say, like, lift those knees in boot camp? Your <laughs> knees are so hot. I was so impressed with your cardio skills. Here. I'm very committed. It's really good. Here, take a gander. I love this moment. Okay, that's uh, Step Hunter. This is heaven. <laughs> I can see why David Schwimmer made out. That was a very sexy movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sexy. Uh, what, did you, what were your parents thinking? Because it was the same year that Sutton was on. Were your parents freaking out that both their children were on the Tony Awards the same year? Um, I, 
I mean, that's complicated, but uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I get it. I mean, I mean, yes, yes, I'm sure, I'm sure, yes. On some level. <laughs> on <Hey>. some level. <laughs> and we'll leave it there. Yeah. Uh, no. <laughs> what was it like for you, Hunter, doing that number? Were you, you know, because to me, it's like, oh, I do this eight times a week, but then you go, oh my God, this is being filmed. Were you like, oh my God, this is being filmed forever? Mm. Well, when they when they asked me to do it, I was kind of like, oh yeah, I'll do it, no big deal. And then we rehearsed it, and then like as we kept getting closer to the date, I was I was like w not sleeping and waking up in the middle of the night thinking about it. And then there was a moment like right before I, we had I had to go over to the uh, theater, and I was like, if I just jump out of the bus, I could run down the street, and then <laughs> Victor Hawks could do it, and I wouldn't have to do it. Cause it was, it was, it was, it didn't hit me till that day. And then I remember I was visibly shaking before the can before the curtain opened. I was so, I was just so worried I was going to screw it up and it was going to be there forever. I was going to have like my Leslie Uggams you know, <laughs> forever on the Tonys. I was the most, it was the most scared I think I've ever, ever been. Wow. A, you don't seem it. B, yeah. was the number truncated in any way for the Tonys or was it as it was on Broadway? I don't, was it? I don't remember. I don't think it was truncated. Broadway because they put us in it too. Oh, right, right. For you. oh yeah, yeah, And yeah. all the understudies, everybody was. It was the worst thing. <laughs> I was terrified because I go, I just learned this choreo. Right. And I was up on the top going, oh my God, I hope no cameras come up this way because you know, I mean, you're standing out in front of all these people and you've literally never done it for people is what what we were doing. <laughs> oh, so scary. Um, here's the here's the ending, which is so fun, and I love that it cuts to Jeff and uh Spencer again. I said freedom. Oh, wait, before I do it, Hunter, were you more nervous about the falsetto we note or the belted note? Oh god, I both. <laughs> both, uh, both. And I, I I don't hit it well at all. It's 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 not I did it. I did. Yeah, I was. I was so fried by that point. I think you sound great. Here, let's watch. Yeah. I said freedom. I said freedom. Oh, oh, oh. Freedom. Wrong. But the title's still awful. Yes, little Sally. Yes, it is. Oh well. <laughs> ah, it's so good. I mean, there's such uh, love in that theater for the show. I mean, did you guys just feel yeah. all that love? Oh yeah, for sure. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, when Jeff, we really when Jeff did. first came out, the audience went crazy, if I remember. Oh, it was so funny. nice. And I and, and this is a this is really dirty, but uh, a bunch of people in thoroughly modern Millie came over and apologized to us for winning the Tony. <laughs> Seriously, this, several people said you guys should have won it. We shouldn't have won it. But right, we were all standing outside on the street because all the casts—they only allowed two or three casts downstage. And Mary Tyler Moore gets out of a limousine, and we're all out there. Do you remember? Were you there, Hunter? Oh, when that I remember that. We were like, "Oh, look, Mary Tyler Moore!" And it never occurred to any of us why she was there. She was there nope. to announce that Thoroughly Modern Millie had won. Right? I was with someone though, Jeff. When when we saw her, we we did the same thing. Like, "Oh, it's Mary Tyler Moore!" And I, it was either with Victor or someone, and we were backstage, and I was, and I, it hit us at the same time. We were like, "Oh no!" <laughs> right. we, we, it, we were like, "Oh great!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I remember they oh, had God. us. They had I think us and Millie were like off stage, and then. They had another show that was like at the stage door, and I can't—I can't remember who was up. And then the fourth show was like on the bus, so like we were. It was Marvin Hamlisch's thing. What with with Kelly O'Hara? Uh, what was that? Oh, with John Sweet Lithgow. Smell. Sweet yeah, smell. Success. Success. That was the other one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I yeah. can't think of what the fourth one. Sweet smell. What was the other Why? other show? Don't Contact remember. Millie. Not right. sense. No. I was trying yeah. to. And then what was it after you guys won all those Tonys? Because you won Best Direction, Best Book, Best Musical, uh, Best Music, Best Score, I guess. What was it like? What What was the show like on Broadway after that? Did it feel like it went to this other level because you'd won all these Tony Awards? I think so. Yeah. I don't remember. Wow. Yeah. We ran for I mean, another so. year and a half or something, I think, didn't we? Something like that. Yeah. Who, uh, who wound up, who stayed the longest? Because Nancy, you were replaced by all these amazing belters. 
But who stayed? Anyone stayed to the end? I came back to the end, and so did you. You were I, there, Hunter. I left and came back. Yeah, same here. I love that. And um, by the way, we just want to say everyone watching, you know, this is still a benefit. So feel free to go to – I keep forgetting to remind people. Go to starsinthehouse.com because, you know, the reason everyone's here is because nobody's working. And that's why everyone was available to do. <laughs> yeah, everyone was like, I'm available. You go to starsinthehouse.com. And um, I also want to just say one more time before we're going we're gonna to close it fairly soon. But don't forget to, to go to Hunter's Theater, yes. redhouse.org. And uh, you're in town's going to be there soon. And and uh, we don't know who the cast is going to be. Are you going to try Are you going to tape your face, Hunter, and play Bobby again? Tape your face. Well, I, I mean, there was this thing a long time ago. We uh, I don't know if Codus was talking about it or, or Rando. I can't remember. And they were saying that if we ever did the revival, they would like, everyone would just move up an age like like Jeff would be Cladwell and I would be Officer Lockstock and uh, Jen That'd would be, be um, yeah. And, and I would uh, be Jen. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, uh, uh, he'd be I, I mean, yeah, he, 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 he said that Ken Jennings would probably just still play uh, Hot Plates. <laughs> of course, <laughs> yeah. I want to catch you a quick story about, about uh, Ken Jennings, who's the most incredible Per person performer he used to do i mean he would only ad lib or, or like 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 peas and carrots in french he would also not pee all day prior to the opening number where they all stood in line waiting to pee this is a true story and ken are you there this is a true story because he was He's, a method actor he is a method actor and i love him dearly Wow. He was going to be in Cyrano here with me, uh, but things happened in his family that stopped him from coming up. But uh, oh my yeah. god! So he would—he wow. just wanted to be as uncomfortable as possible, so that he wouldn't have to act as much. And as soon as that number, the opening number ended, he'd run down and pee in the in the bathroom at the back of the house. Yeah. <laughs> all oh, over by the, wall. the way, all Hunter, over the world. The show you're forgetting about was a little show called Mama Mia. Mama Mia, no show. Oh, yeah. Wow. I know we all kind of wow. forgot. That. Oh, Who remembers? Wow, wow. But wait, Gabe Redhouse. Right so listen, Nancy Opal is up for anything. I I made a rickety rackety piano recording. Hold on. Yep, yep, you did. You did. And Nancy's gonna try to recreate a song from the show. A with no technological skill on both of our parts. <laughs> and this is bad news, guys. I don't know. We don't know what's gonna happen. No, we really, no, we really, really don't know what's going to happen. Let's By see. Way, Nancy, you were lauded yesterday. We had the cast of Mrs. Doubtfire on because they were on their third preview when Broadway shut down. And uh, Rob McClure was saying that when they recorded the album for Honeymoon in Vegas, they began at 8.30 in the morning. And everyone was like, no one's going to show up at 8.30 in the morning. The singing is too hard. And Nancy, you were like, I will. And you woke up at like 8.25, <laughs> showed up at the studio and like did your song in one take with hype up. Yeah, always. I could sing anything at any time of day. Yeah. Well, that one didn't matter. I mean, you know, that was, that was that, no, it wasn't that hard. It wasn't that hard. Uh huh. Anywho, you still remember. got it. I don't remember. I didn't get to do it long enough for me to remember. <laughs> Good point. Yeah. Right. So we're going to see what's going to happen. So this is Penelope. So imagine Ken Jennings with a full, literal full bladder at this moment. All right. And listen, if it sounds, if if the sound looks sounds really weird and bad. We'll wave to you. Okay, we'll start over. Too much of that, because that'll just throw me off. We probably, you probably just better listen to me sing it, sing it weirdly or badly or with music too loud. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. Just go for it. Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Hi. Hey. Hi. I'm getting my sweater. Hi, Hi. Hi. Cody. Why is he struggling with you? <laughs> oh, <my God>. So <laughs> silent. <laughs> Hold on. Turns are hard or catch is tight, you've got no right, I've heard it all before. Just as once is once too much, cause once you've once, you'll want it once, once more. I run the only toilet in this part of town, you see. So if you gotta go, you've got to go through me. It's a privilege to be. Water's worth its weight in gold these days. <laughs> And <laughs> that's that perfect. Oh, Ken, Ken is still holding it. That's so defeated. Ken is still holding. <laughs> it just stops. Is it on like power saver battery? 
No, it's it's not the battery at all. All right, we're just gonna go for it. Once a heart on the you've got the right. I've heard it all before. Just as once is once too much, because once they've once, they'll want to. To go through me, as if you didn't know, it's a privilege to be. Water's worth its weight in gold these days. No more bathrooms like in olden days. You come here and pay a fee for the privilege to pee. 20 years we've had the drought and our reservoirs have all dried up. I take my baths now in a coffee cup. I boil what's left of it for tea. And it's a privilege to be the politicians in their wisdom saw that there should be a law. The politicians tax the toilets and made illegal public urination and defecation. So come and bring your coins to me. Write your name here in the record book. The authorities will want to look if you've been regular with me. Have you paid the proper fee for the privilege to pee? The good Lord made us so we piss each day until we piss away. The good Lord made sure that what goes in men must soon go out again. So you're no different then from lowly me. And I think I'll charge you twice. Or oh, better yet, have you arrested? Since you prefer the law gets tested. And in your in town, you'll see why it's dumb to fight with me. For the privilege to be. Jeez, that was crazy. <laughs> that was amazing. I had to hold my phone like this the whole time. Okay, Nancy, I, I had a video, just Jennifer, every time you hit the high note, Jennifer would go. <laughs> it's so cute. Well, because she has some earbuds in, she's probably like, yeah. <laughs> it was amazing. I, mean, we gotta teach you. I can't really grimace, but I have to. You still got it. That high C was amazing. All right. In conclusion, you still got it. Hunter, Nancy's available. Hear. Oh, you can't hear? This always See? happens. We're breaking no. up. Okay. okay got um, Hunter, that was Nancy's oh, audition for You're in Town. <laughs> okay. She's in. Okay. Just want to make sure She's you in. <laughs> She still got it. Original Kate. I am yep. Thanks for coming in, Nancy. <laughs> That's all we need right now. Thank you, then, Nancy. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So, Stars in the House is twice a day. Tonight, 8 p.m., we've got the cast TV show One Day at a Time with, by the way, Rita Moreno and Norman Lear. So excited. Wow. Yeah. Wow. We're also doing Plays in the House. Tomorrow, 2 p.m., is the Little Dog Laugh with the whole original cast, including Julie White and Johnny Galecki. Nancy, it'd be great for you to do one of those uh, Donald Ives plays that you did back in the day. I'd love to do that. Da David Ives. Wait, David Ives, Donald Ives. It's David. Yeah. Okay. There's so. about 10 million of them. So, Take your choice. We worked. We did it this summer. We will yeah. talk about that here. Um, all right. Thank you all. You're in town, people, for being here. Wait. Thank you for donating. Starts in the house. Oh, yes. We don't, <laughs> we're, we're going to start our auction again. That is Spencer we're Cadence. It back up. So that's Spencer Cadence, you're in town t shirt. Don't, uh -huh. wait, it's, ne it's never been worn. It's never been worn more than 10 times. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, so, nice. so wait, why am I so bad at this? It's hard because it's opposite. Spencer, yeah, will you um, autograph that once we get the auction starts again? Definitely, yeah. Nancy Opal, anything? I can't hear. I promise or James. shout out to our PSM, Julia Jones. Uh, yep, yep. Shout out to Julia. 
Jennifer, one day you'll hear again. Yeah. Um, all right, so the auction will begin again. Go to starsandhouse.com to visit. Thank you, everybody, from here in town. Peace out. See you all tonight. And broadcast. <laughs>